Hi, welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I am going to be doing a little recap of the Royal Vegas retreat because I went last weekend and I had a lot of fun. Um, I tried to film throughout the weekend and like vlog a little bit, but I wound up missing a lot of stuff because I didn't want to be like focused on filming the entire weekend. I kind of just wanted to like enjoy the event. So um, if you want a more um, like film heavy, more vlog style video covering the event, I believe I saw a kombucha recording. I think my friend Toast is going to make a video of some kind. I'm not sure. I saw her recording a lot. Um, also, obviously, Lovely Lore was there and I'm sure she's going to do a video herself. So um, I'm just gonna recap it in my own words and I will try to insert the photos and video that I did take throughout the weekend over here just to kind of give some visuals as I talk but um, I definitely didn't film that much at all on Saturday or Sunday so it's probably gonna be more photo heavy at um, those days when I talk about them. But, um, so let's just get into it. I'm just going to kind of recap the entire weekend from my perspective. I am going to give my critiques of the event first, and then I'm going to go into what I liked about it to kind of end on a positive note. And then I'm going to talk, um, a little bit about like what the cost was for me and like, I guess, give my little, uh, reflection as just a regular attendee that paid for all of my own stuff. So hopefully that'll be helpful to um, help y'all decide if you want to attend if this event happens in the future. I believe that the organizer uh, discussed doing this every two to three years maybe, which I actually totally support. I think that's a great idea and I will get into why later on. Um, so let's talk about it. I flew in Thursday morning. I had to leave for my flight at like 5 45 in the morning also if i look down it's because i have my little notes down here um so the good thing about arriving there i am currently in cst so uh the vegas time was pst so that was two hours behind me that was really great going over there in terms of like my flight left at 7 a.m and i arrived at 8 a.m vegas time um so that was nice because i felt like i got there early so I had the entirety of Thursday to kind of just relax with my friends get settled and get ready for the event um but what really sucked about that is I kept waking up at like five or six in the morning because normally on the weekends I work and my job usually requires me to be there at like 6 a.m so <laughs> I'm already used to waking up early and having that two hour time difference meant that I did not sleep in that much, um, which I guess was kind of nice because I didn't have to get up right away. I had time to kind of like relax in bed before I got up and started getting ready. But that also meant I was getting tired a lot earlier than I would have liked to, which will factor in later on. Also, um, so when I got to the airport, I... I should have expected this because it was Vegas, but there, when I tell you there were slot machines everywhere, there were slot machines everywhere. Like in the airport, I was like, oh, there's probably going to be like a room for it. Now they were just like in the hallway, which I thought was really funny. I actually didn't end up gambling the entire weekend. It's not really my thing. Um, I don't really understand the appeal of it. Um, but I think, uh, some other attendees did enjoy that aspect, but not my thing. I just thought it was kind of funny because it was in Vegas and I didn't gamble. Um, so when I got to the airport, it did take me a little bit to get from my gate to the baggage claim just because it was a new city. I'd never been there before. And so I'm used to airports, but I usually travel uh, between the same three to four uh, to go see my family and to go home over my school breaks and then obviously to come to college. So it wasn't too bad and I ended up hanging out in the airport for a while because um, my comm had a ton of people who attended. If you were there, you saw a lot of Dallas people. There were like 20 to 25 of us. I did know a big portion of the attendees from Dallas just from attending comm events and such, but there was a good chunk of people that I didn't know, which was kind of nice. I got to meet some people and then there were a few people from other comms who palled around with us. I know Dreamy Sweetie was one of those. I got to meet her. She was super sweet and came to a bunch of our events and hung out with us. So that was really fun. Um, but my flight ended up getting there about the same time as a few other Dallas people. So I just waited so that we could share um, an Uber to the hotel. And that was one thing I factored into my costs is that Uber and Lyft sharing was kind of a must. Like you could definitely walk around on the strip. And I know a lot of people who did. 
I personally was not very comfortable walking on the strip in Lolita. Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> is that when you were wearing Lolita, all like the salespeople ignored you, like the people who try to like hand you flyers and like go to their stuff, they would ignore you when you were in J fashion, but the normies would bother you. And then when you were in regular clothes, the salespeople would bother you, but the normies would leave you alone. And I very dislike people coming up to me. Um, I don't really mind if it was just, you know, the people being like, what's going on here? I got very used to just being like fashion convention, fashion convention all weekend but I'm not the type of person who really enjoys that or is very good at just like being like no and like walking away so I know a lot more of my friends did a lot more walking up and down the strip I didn't really do as much I definitely preferred to uber if we were going anywhere um so we did share the cost of that which was really good because like the cost wasn't too bad especially split among like five or six people i think there was one night that we got seven people into an uber and our driver was not happy about that whoops um but it was pretty manageable so uh split between you know four to five people most rides averaged to about uh three to six dollars per person which really wasn't too bad at all especially for me because like i said i didn't really venture too far out from the um con hotel and my own hotel too too much and it wasn't bad so we actually decided to stay at a hotel across from the venue hotel this is me and my three roommates because it was smaller it was cheaper by a big portion and it wasn't too bad uh getting to and from the venue hotel because they were connected with a little pedestrian bridge that went over the road so it was super easy to access and it was kind of nice because it was also a lot quieter um with the mgm there was always activity all the time and it was a huge hotel which i'll get into a little bit more um and so there were a ton of people there and i really liked our hotel because like obviously pretty much every single hotel had like a casino in it but um ours it like the casino portion was towards the front of the building and then once you got back to where the rooms were super quiet it was really nice um to sleep and just to uh like i guess unwind after the day because you didn't have like once you got through the lobby like pretty much no one was gonna bother you so that was nice and it also saved us quite a bit of money so after we got settled, we ended up going to this really cute cafe. It was about 20, 30 minutes away from the strip. Uh, my friend did some organizing to go see some cute stuff because on the strip it was a lot more like shows and bars, not like venues that most Lolitas I think would want to go to like aesthetically and like for our tastes. So we went to two cafes that were off the strip. The first one we went to was really, really cute. It was quite expensive and I'm really loved like the backdrop and I loved the tea sets that they brought out for us. The food was okay, uh, the tea was really good and then we also got some cocktails there that were really awesome. So we met up with some more comm members there after we got settled and got changed. Uh, my first cord that I wore was I styled my pink honey cake OP for the first time. I got that a few weeks ago because it showed up on Wonderwelt for a very reasonable price and it's one of the OPs that has full back shirring and I really really love those because I wore Lolita to class. So I've been trying to get my hands on those easy, comfy pieces for more of like my lounge days or when I don't want to put like a ton of effort into my coordinate, but I still want to wear Lolita. So I will put up some pictures that I took over here from that cafe. We had a really nice time. Um, and then I didn't do too much afterwards. I was really tired and very jet lagged. So after our lovely comm admin, uh, she was visiting family up there. And so that meant she had a vehicle. She drove us back, which was really nice of her. And I think um, she hung out with us for a little bit. I can't remember if she went to go do some stuff with our other comm members who were wandering around the strip. Um, but yeah, I was, I was tired. So I went home and went to bed like a loser. But, uh, so Friday was the first like formal day of the con. And then we went to that other cafe that I mentioned. This one was a little bit closer. It was still, you know, off the strip, but it was more like 15 minutes away. And I went with just my roommates. Um, so then after that, we headed over to the con. And so this is where my biggest critique of the event comes in. So the walking. Um, I am a pretty active person. I, you know, I'm a figure skater. I walk to school pretty much every day. So, you know, I'm used to walking distances. But the problem was that I got so lost, like trying to find where the actual convention was located in the MGM because these hotels in Vegas, like the bigger ones, literally feel like you're in like a shopping mall because of how huge it is. So to get to where the con actually was in the hotel from the lobby was like a 10 minute walk. So 
it wasn't a huge deal to me like the actual like distance to get there it was more like what you had to do so first of all you had to once you got into the lobby you had to go over to where the hotels were located and then there was a little um like archway that you walk through that said this is where you go to get to uh convention floors one through three so that already was fine you know that made sense to me and then I walk through and I don't see an elevator and I was like what the heck and so that kind of worried me so I kind of went back and then I was like okay I guess I'll just like keep walking and so I followed that around and then I somehow wound up like uh past the casino it, then there was like a food court that was pretty big and then you had to keep going and then one of my friends saw my message that we had like a little group chat going and I was like I'm here but I don't know like where I'm going and so one of my friends saw and she gave me directions but yeah you had to go through like three separate areas just to get back to where the convention center was and again not a big deal if you're in normal clothes and people aren't bugging you, but it was really annoying because people were stopping us every five seconds to be like, what's going on here? And so, like I said, I got really good at getting just that short and sweet fashion convention for the entire weekend. One of my friends was like over explaining and I'm like, girly, just, just keep, just keep moving. It's fine. Like you don't need to explain everything to them. There were a couple people who were like genuinely interested and a couple people actually kind of like had a good idea of what was going on. There were two guys that just looked like normal dudes. Like they were in like jeans and a t-shirt and I thought they were going to do like the whole normal, like, Oh, what's the occasion? Like what's going on here? I'm sure some people thought that we were like performers of some kind, which was kind of funny. Um, but they were both like, Oh, is there some kind of like Japanese street fashion thing happening? And we were like, yeah, actually, that's right. So that was fun. And then there were a few people who were like, is there a Lolita thing going on? And we were like, yeah, so it was nice. But like I said, it was just kind of annoying to get from the lobby back to the con center because you're going through the casino where everything, to me at least, looked really similar. And so I was getting lost really easily. And then you had to go through this other section. Um, and like I said, the salespeople would leave you alone. The, the con... Uh, people who were there for like the other events because uh, there were a few conventions in town There was also one that was like a bunch of anti-maskers and Republicans and I was like this is awkward um, So that wasn't fun because those people would get up in your face and I'm like, please stay away from me You're not wearing a mask and I really do not want to have you in my personal space And especially as the night went on people would get drunker and drunker and so for the most part people weren't like overtly disrespectful most people would just come up ask a question and then once they got their answer they'd be like oh okay and move on but there was one night where people were being very very rude and aggressive um I don't know what was going on but there were a lot of people in like cowboy boots and cowboy hats so that tells me it was some kind of western thing going on those people were like very aggressive towards us like I was walking back on Saturday with a friend of mine and we were trying to meet up with some of our other uh community members at the food court and I was wearing a wig that day so my peripheral vision like was not non-existent which was kind of nice because you know it helps you ignore dirty looks but um I think one of the owners from Kuroshiro Kawaii and his girlfriend came up behind us and they're like hey like we're gonna walk with you until you find your friends because people are like giving you really dirty looks and we're concerned for your safety. And I was like, oh, that's great. So like I said, and then one dude came up to us and like leaned in and said like, fuck you. And then like walked away and I was like, Jesus. So that was the only night. But like, like I said, as people got more and more drunk, they got like more up in your personal business, which really wasn't fun. So long story short, it was kind of a hike to get from the lobby to where the con actually was in this building, which was um, annoying because I think one of my critiques and why uh, this will play into some of the other stuff I talk about later. So your options were pretty much um, like get downstairs and go to the con and stay there like all day and then just like eat at the food court and then once like you like stay for everything you want to stay for and then go home but there wasn't a ton going on between the bigger events um unless you were like super into the panels that they were having so I think a lot of people like like me, for instance, I wanted to like go and get into comfier clothes or have like a wardrobe change. I would get back to my room and I'd be like I don't want to go back like I'm tired I'm comfortable now and it's not even that we were staying at a different hotel because the people I talked to who were staying in the MGM kind of felt the same way because like to get back to your rooms you had to go all the way back to the lobby so I don't even think it mattered that much whether you were staying there or not 
Um, but once I did finally find the actual area that the con was being hosted in, I got checked in, got my badge. It like was not hard at all. The staff was super nice. Like all weekend, the staff were great. Um, and vax cards were checked. So, um, they did follow their COVID policy, which I really appreciated. Everybody was really great about keeping masks on all weekend, unless they were like eating or, you know, we would take them off for like a quick photo and then have them back on. So that was really nice. I wasn't a huge fan of the lighting over like in the convention center, but it was not too bad because there was a bigger lobby area right outside of where the con was that had like huge windows that had awesome lighting. So that was nice. Um, they did have some cute little photos spot set up but lighting wasn't great that's okay very small critique on my part um oh and I got to meet up with my friend Twinkle for the first time in person that was really cool and we twinned wonder cookie that day and we ran into somebody else wearing wonder cookie um and she ended up palling around with us for the weekend too so that was really fun I was really happy to meet her because we've been talking on Instagram for like a year and so I was super happy to see her then we made a lap around the dealer's hall, which was awesome. Like there was Kuroshiro Kawaii had, you know, obviously their Meta and um, Royal Princess Alice pieces, which were selling super well. And I can tell why, because I've never actually seen that much Royal Princess Alice in person. And so I wasn't really sure like what the quality of it was or anything, but the dresses looked really nice up close. And I was very tempted by one dress that I saw but um, as I'll get into the cost later, I had already spent a lot of money and I was like, nope, I need to, I need to restrain myself. Uh, they also had Hainuli and I think it's pronounced Leaf. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. <laughs> and they had BB&B, who I love. The owners of BB&B are so sweet and they were really nice. Uh, and they had tons of indie brands if you uh, look at the full list of all the vendors that showed up. So the shopping was definitely one of the best parts of the weekend. And from what I heard, the vendors all did super well. They made a ton of money. So that's great. Uh, then we popped into a few of the panels that were happening, um, and like I said, there wasn't a ton of people in there, and I will kind of get into my theories later on when I get into, like, my big critique of the event as a whole. Um, we chatted with some other attendees. The fashion show was running about 20 minutes late, so we all kind of sat down outside the hallway and hung out while we waited for them to let us in, which wasn't a big deal because it was kind of nice to talk to some other people, and that was one of the days that I was wearing a wig. <laughs> So I was talking to a few people and then I talked to them again on a different day with my natural hair and they were like, oh yeah, I follow you on Instagram. And I was like, oh yeah, we talked the other day. <laughs> you don't know who I was, which it was just really funny to me. The two days where I was wearing a wig, I was just like, haha, I'm like incognito. So that was kind of funny. Um, and same thing with me with like some other people that I follow on Instagram who were wearing wigs like one day and then like the day that they weren't, I was like, hey, I do know you. <laughs> So it was kind of fun to see um, all these people that I have followed online but never actually met in person. It was a whole uh, experience. Um, so uh, we were just kind of hanging out in the hallway and it was honestly just really cool to hang out around people that like have your same interests. Like Dallas has a huge community so I'm used to being around a lot of Lolitas at once but like just for people that came from like all over all in one spot it was really really cool so then we got into the J fashion show and there were a lot of really awesome brands um, showcased and um, my favorite one just purely based on the energy of the models were the KSK models they were awesome they knew what they were doing they were having a really fun time so it was really cool to watch and I really appreciated that the fashion show was split up between general J fashion and then Lolita fashion so that both of them had like their own chance to shine and showcase what they had. So Friday was pretty busy because it had those two, like it had the two main attractions in my opinion that were the J Fashion Show and then later on they had the Chord Contest. And I believe the J Fashion Show was around 5 p.m. and then the Chord Contest was around 7.30. So um, some con members and I went to go get dim sum and at that point I gave up on my wig because uh, your girl forgot to bring wig caps because I had just gotten my hair dyed it's we added more pink into it I don't know if you can actually tell that I did anything to it but I think it looks cool um and I was like I really don't want to wash my hair because I had just gotten it dyed and with uh like fashion colors like this it uh I never really know how much my hair is going to like bleed 
until I wash it for the first time and I didn't really want to do that in a new environment and I also have to use like specific salon products and I didn't want to bring like my whole range of things so I was like okay um I got this done on Tuesday which is when we did like a whole wash and everything and I was like my hair is probably gonna start getting gross around Friday Saturday so I will bring wigs as a backup if my hair just is looking real bad um but I assumed that I would have wig caps or with the wigs because they were both new in the packaging but I did not, so I did get one from a friend. She had an extra for the second day that I wore a wig, which was Saturday, but for Friday, it was it was rough. I just kind of like, you did this in the wig, and I was like, cool, let's go. Um, but yeah, I gave up on it at dinner, so I, went, I ran to the bathroom, took my wig off, and came back in. Mm, it was interesting. We fixed my hair afterwards, but it was really funny. So then we went back and went to see the cord contest. And this is when I, we finally found out on literally the last day that you could have, if you took an Uber, you could have them drop you off very close to where the convention center was. So you didn't have to do that 10 minute walk. I really wish I had known that at the time, but we literally did not know that until we were coming back for the very last thing that they had, which was the tea party. But anyways, we came back and so we went to go see the cord contest. I really loved all of the entries. Um, I think everybody had like a very unique coordinate, which I thought was really cool. Like it wasn't like it was all like one style or it wasn't like everybody was wearing like all the brand that they possibly could. Like there was actually a really good variety of like indie brands that were showcased and I thought everybody looked amazing. And one of my friends won second place. So I was super happy for them and cause they're, absolutely stunning and they had put a lot of thought into their cord like when we started planning this trip in June I remember like they were already like talking about what they wanted to do and planning out everything so I was super happy for them um by that point I was real tired because like I said earlier I was waking up at 5 a.m because I'm used to waking up at 7 or earlier at home when you bring in that two hour time difference I was waking up really early <laughs> Um, but my friend really wanted to go check out a club that she was like invited to by one of like the promoters I was like, are you sure this is a legit thing when she was telling me about it? But like apparently like this is an actual job that people have is to go find Like women to show up to their clubs so that guys will come in and spend money, which was really funny um, so I guess she had run into him and he had put her name on a list for one of the clubs in town and she wanted me to go with her so I went back to my hotel, I, I like relaxed for like an hour and then we got changed into like actual streetwear, not Lolita. I was not about to go clubbing in Lolita, as funny as that would be. I was like, they will laugh at us if we do that. So we did that and then we were only there for a couple of hours because her feet were really hurting from her heels. I was really tired and so I was really, really happy that she didn't want to stay for like a long time. We got our free drinks, which was why we wanted to go in the first place came home and it was all good. I got home at like 1 a.m. I'm like shocked that I wasn't that tired the next morning because like I said, 5 a.m. got home at 1 a.m. and I don't even think I fell asleep until like 2 a.m. because um, after I got home, I called um, my partner because um, they were also out that night. And so I was hanging out in the hallway talking to them for a little bit for probably like 30 minutes before I actually went into my hotel room because I didn't want to bug my roommates who were already asleep by the time I got in. Um, so yeah, long day for me on Friday. So then Saturday rolled around and that was very exciting. So it was the swap meet that morning and, um, our, uh, community got a table so that we could all bring some stuff to sell and I think you could start getting there and setting up at 9 a.m. And then you had to be checked in by 11 and because the swap meet officially started at, I believe, 1030. I think it was 1030. Um, but because we're Lolitas and we take freaking forever to get ready, <laughs> um, I got in there like right before the doors were like officially open. And so ran in, got my stuff set up at our table and then did a quick lap because I wanted to be there to see what people had because I wanted to be like the first in line if there was anything that I wanted, which I did buy two things, which I will show you that I was really excited about. And I sold most of my stuff. There were two dresses that I brought that I really, really wanted to sell because I hate selling on Lace Market. Like I will 
take selling to a community member or selling on my Instagram over Lace Market any day because it is just so annoying to get in contact with people and people DMing you like really low ball offers. Like one of my friends was trying to sell a sugary carnival set and somebody was like harassing her offering like $50 for a full like head bow, socks, OP, original release, sugary carnival that was in good condition. Like obviously, like she wasn't even trying to sell it for like $600. I think she was just trying to get like 200 for it, which is like very reasonable in my opinion. So again, TLDR, hate lace market sellers. So I was really happy that I got rid of a bunch of stuff that I'd just been sitting in my closet that either um, wasn't going in the direction that I wanna go in with my wardrobe or just thing, like there were a couple dresses. There was one dress that I have in multiple colorways and I was like, I really, do not need it in this many colorways. And so I decided to part with it. And there was another one where the cut was just really not flattering on me and I just I just didn't like it. And then so I sold it to somebody who will give it a better home than I could. So I was really happy with that. And then I will show y'all the two things that I bought that I was very excited about. And both of them were very reasonably priced, which was nice. So swap meet was a good time. And I also got to meet a few people that way because I was wearing my natural hair that day. So people actually knew who I was since I'm not somebody who wears wigs a lot. Like for instance, there were a few people who wear wigs a lot. So I'm used to looking at their face instead of like the whole picture, but there were a lot of people who I just did not recognize if they were wearing their natural hair and they, they didn't usually, or if they were wearing wigs um, where they don't usually, if that makes sense. So that was nice. I wore a cotton candy shop for that morning and then I was twinning with one of my friends. So that was very cool. So I will run and grab those dresses that I bought real quick. Also, I love how I tried to write out notes ahead of time to prevent myself from rambling and I just, I ended up rambling anyway. So this is gonna be long, I'm really sorry. <laughs> so the first thing I bought was this Fancy Hospital JSK and it was $200, which was a really good price for this print because it was one of those prints that I was like, I love it, but I do not love it enough to spend like big money on it and um, I think this usually gets quite overpriced on lace market, so I was very happy to find this. It's in amazing condition, and I cannot wait to wear this. It came with the little brooch and everything still there, so I was happy to find this. The second dress I bought is <laughs> extremely damaged, and uh, for that reason, it was very, very cheap. And I saw this hanging on somebody's display, and my friend owns this dress, and I saw her wear it, and I was like, I must have it. So this is um, Baby the Star Shine Bright. It's a Shuring Princess. I don't know which release entirely, but it's in the hot pink X black colorway. And I do have this in um, like the black and red tartan. So I'm very excited to own this in the hot pink because I think it's really cute. As you can see, the shoulder straps, the elastic is busted. <laughs> so it was really, really cheap. And I bought it because I have fixed this problem before and so I didn't think it would be too big of a deal to get them back in working order. So that is what I bought at the swap meet. And I was pretty happy because I pretty much spent what I made from selling my pieces. So that was all good. And after the swap meet, um, I ended up running out of there by about noon, I wanna say. And when I was heading out, I ran into Lore, which was really cool because, you know, She's very cool. So we stopped and had a chat and took some photos. Um, so that was really fun. And then I went back to my hotel room because I had to make a wardrobe change because I decided that it would be a great idea to run over to Sin City Anime that was happening the same weekend, very close to the hotel because they were also having Lolita programming and they had Rin Rin Dahl as their guest for the tea party. And I was like, I love her and this sounds like a really fun time. And so some of my friends went with me. So I ended up changing into a completely different coordinate, <laughs> wig and all. And this is when I had a wig cap. So that one was a lot more manageable, but definitely by the end of the night, I just had like so much stuff on me. I was like, I need to take this off. <laughs> but um, I ran and got changed and I wore Waffle Heart for the first time. That weekend, I wore a lot of pieces for the first time that I hadn't had a chance to either because I felt that they were too over the top or I had specifically planned to wear them at this event. And so leading up to it, I was like, I'm not gonna wear it because I'm gonna wear it this weekend. So I will put up a picture of my coordinate because I was super, super proud of it. And I was also wearing my AP shoes that I had bought off of Wonderwell. They were the melty chocolate ones and they matched 
my outfit perfectly. I am a little bit disappointed because they were too big and so I had to be very careful when walking. I couldn't go super fast because they were platforms and they were just a little bit too big and I was like if I step wrong I'm going to fall. So yeah had to be careful but I got back and I took a second to just like decompress after bringing my um little suitcase filled with my my two treasures that I found at the swap meet home and then I got changed into my new coordinate and then I elected to uber just by myself over to sin city so that wasn't too bad my driver was super nice uh, we had a good chat about anime and nerd shit so that was fun <laughs> and um so the tea party that was at sin city had some very good things and it had some very bad things so uh we got there and i ended up getting there about 1 30 which wasn't too bad uh the tea started at 2 or it was scheduled to start at 2. i ran in and got my badge because i had paid earlier and you were actually able to get a discount if you had your royal vegas badge but because i had already bought my tickets and everything before that news was announced i just paid full price for them i didn't really mind it wasn't that big of a deal um, so I got there and I'm glad I got there when I did because I ran into another Lolita who was going to the tea and it was actually the same person who bought my chest chocolate that I was selling so that was kind of funny and they were talking to me about how they had gone over to where the tea was and then they had told them to go to a separate room first because I guess the organizer wanted to do like a little uh, fashion walk over to where the tea was so we could stop and take photos together and it was, it was it was really cute it was just not communicated very well originally from my understanding because like I said I got this information from um somebody that I'd run into but I think she had already like been back and forth a few times trying to figure out where we were meeting but I got my badge with no issues uh walked over to the room that we were meeting in was very close to registration but the room where the tea was was pretty far and so if you were one of those people that was running around back and forth trying to figure out where the hell you were going, I can imagine it would be kind of frustrating and kind of annoying because you're in Lolita and so you're going to be getting tired and hot a lot faster than you normally would if you were just wearing like t-shirt and jeans. You know what I mean? Um, but I met up with the other Lolitas who were joining the tea party that uh, day in the room to the side. And we, it was started about 30 minutes late, I think, if I remember correctly. And that is because a bunch of people from RVR came at the last second. So they had to kind of add more tables and rearrange from my understanding. It wasn't a big deal. The organizer came and got us okay. We walked over together. It was really nice. Everybody there was really well dressed. I was very impressed with a lot of the coordinates. I thought everybody looked amazing. So that was really nice. And I got to meet some of the people who were going to both events and some people who were only going to uh, the Sin City stuff. So we got to the tea party. <laughs> and then um, as we were, we stopped and took like our big group photo with Rin Rin at this really cute little gazebo. So that was nice. I really hope I can get those photos because they're really cute. I had to take a little video as we were going up. Um, so I was kind of towards the middle of this little line that we had created of Lolita's. And as I'm walking up to the door, there's like two people dressed in normie clothes and like a cosplayer standing outside the door. And one of the normies, it was a man, was like super upset. And he was like talking to the organizer and he was like, are we going to be let in yet? Like we've been standing here. Like nobody told us that like we were going to a different location. Just being super rude to her. I felt really bad because I don't think she expected this to happen. Because like I said, they were not expecting the turnout that they got. I think they thought it was going to be just like a little intimate thing with the Vegas community. And I don't think she expected for all these other people to show up especially not people in normie clothes being rude um and so uh like as I was walking in and getting checked in um they were like oh well like we've been waiting here and she was like oh well like did you pay to be at this event and they were like yes but like they weren't wearing j fashion of any kind so in my head I was like why would anybody assume that you were here for a Lolita event when you're not wearing Lolita and so I don't know if it was just like they didn't have a dress code or if like the organizer was just kind of like shocked that this was even happening to be like um listen there's a dress code like sorry but yeah that's how we ended up with uh, a table full of normies and cosplayers and the three poor lolitas that got stuck with them when i was getting in like we were getting sat down at tables and uh, like i went with a few friends and then we also grabbed a couple extra people that we didn't know previously to sit at our table but um i was sitting down while there were seats open and i was like guys please please because i really did not want to get stuck with these rude people 
Um, they didn't make like a huge fuss during the tea party itself. The tea party was actually really nice. The room got pretty loud because it was small. And like I said, I don't think they were expecting it to be like a huge thing. But I mean, when you bring over a very popular guest from Japan, I think you would think that more people were going to show up. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was a thing. But um, all the people I talked to there that were in Lolita were very lovely. It was nice. We had a we had a good fun chat and then the food was okay. <laughs> Could have been better. It was all sweets. And so I hadn't eaten anything that day. That was a common theme is I kept forgetting to eat that weekend just because there was so much happening. <laughs> so I was very, very sad to see that it was all sugar because at that point I was like, really just want like a sandwich or something that is not sugar <laughs> so that was okay um we had a fun time talking like I said it was pretty loud so it was kind of hard to hear but Rin Rin came over and chatted with all of us and it was really nice we got to get a table pick with her so that was cool and then we did some games the tea party ran very late and so I was kind of sad because I ended up missing some stuff at RVR that I wanted to go to but it wasn't a huge deal I knew there was that risk of going um and I made my priorities so that was nice. We all got to take photos with her. That was, She was super sweet, like, the whole time. Um, I was really happy I got to meet her. And then we had some stuff that was raffled off towards the end. And two of the people who weren't wearing Lolita won things that were very Lolita-specific. So I don't think people appreciated that. And overall, I don't know, they were very loud. And I was just kind of like, why are you here? Like, I felt like they were treating it like... You know, at Disney, when you have, like, character breakfast, I think that's what they thought it was, and eh, it was weird. I didn't like it. But everything else was good. So after we finished up at the tea, we ran by the dealer's hall for a little bit at Sin City because they had some cool stuff going on. Like, Rin Rin had a booth where um, she brought some pieces over from different Japanese brands and had one dress that was for reservation um, that was super pretty. Um, what brand was it? I think it was, from, it was Triple Fortune. It was really gorgeous, and she ended up wearing it at her panel on Sunday. Um, so she had that available to reserve, which I thought was really awesome because we don't really get a lot of opportunities to see these pieces in person. You kind of just have to order and hope for the best. Oh, and she was wearing that new gingerbread dress that AP came out with that I ordered. And so it was really cool to see it in person. So that made me more excited for that package, which I think is arriving today or tomorrow because it cleared customs on Friday. And usually after that, it doesn't take very long to get to me since it comes from Chicago and I'm in Nebraska, so it's not too far. So there was that, um, but there was some really cool stuff in the dealer's hall. So we did some shopping. Uh, one of my friends who's super into rhythm games was in the gaming room. And then we all piled into an Uber and went back over to RVR. That was the night where the normies were, they were very aggressive. And so, like I said, I had my twin tail wig on. And so I couldn't really see what was going on. And then we got escorted over to our friends. So we met up with them. That was nice. Um, and at that point we were pretty fucking tired. So um, we wanted to go back up to some of the late night panels that were happening, but I was like, I really need to get out of this outfit, y'all. So we went back to the hotel and I was, I was so tired and I just ended up passing out and going to sleep. So it was okay, but it was overall a really good day. I'm really happy that I found the stuff I wanted at the swap meet. I'm happy I sold my stuff. And then tea party was fun, despite the normies, the uh, like, room itself and the lack of savory options I think that was also the night that we ended up yeah that was the night that we got back to my room I changed into comfy clothes and then I still hadn't eaten anything and it was like 8 p.m at this point and I think originally we were like do we want to go to the food court that was at the MGM but like the food options weren't great so um my friends ended up coming back to my hotel with me while I changed then we went over to In-N-Out which was kind of fun and that was when, you know, we were, I don't, I didn't drink that much that night. I drank, uh, not a lot on Friday, but I certainly enough to get like tipsy to when I got to my hotel room. I was like, it is really hard to be quiet when you're like this. Um, but I hadn't drank nearly that much on Saturday night, but some of my friends had. <laughs> and so and it was an interesting trip. Um, our poor Uber drivers, I certainly hope whoever called them, like their rating didn't suffer because of it, but at least we got food. And then I got home and I was like, I'm out, we're going to sleep now. So I passed the fuck out. Um, and then 
Sunday, which was the last day of the con, that is when we went back over to Sin City because Ren Ren was having her panel that morning. It was really fun. It was, it was a lot more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like there were a lot fewer attendees, so it was a little bit more intimate, if that makes sense. Um, and it was mostly Lolita's. There were a couple cosplayers and there was this one random dude in the back that I was very confused as to why he was there. Because he asked, like, one interesting question, which was about uh, different, like, seasonal trends in Lolita, which was cool. And I also really appreciated that her panel wasn't Lolita 101, because you, that's usually what you see at cons. And, like, when I was initially getting into the fashion, I was like, oh, that's so cool. But now I'm just like, damn, can we get some new content, please? So that was really fun. She talked about some really cool stuff. And, um, but this dude, he asked that question second, but then the first question that he asked was about like bowing. And so she assumed that he meant like curtsying or something. Uh, and I don't know, but he didn't know what a petticoat was. Like he didn't like, she, cause she said petticoat and he was like, what? And she was like, yeah, the thing that you wear to make the dress poofy. And he was like, ah, okay. Interesting. Anyways, and so then we went back into the dealer's room. Uh, we did some more shopping, and then um, I got a little Polaroid photo with her, and I got to talk with her for a little bit, so it was really nice. It was a fun time. And so then after that, we ran back over to the MGM and got dropped off next to the convention center because we really did not want to walk again. At that point, I was really tired. Like, I was dragging from the weekend. Um, I was pretty jet-lagged still. Um, I was also just in general, like health wise, I could tell that I was starting to get like con plague, you know, where, you know, I wasn't like I was sick, but I just, uh, I don't know, you know, how you just feel kind of gross from being like in an unfamiliar environment. That's kind of how I was feeling at that point. And then there was a lot of walking. I don't think there was a single day that I walked under five miles. Friday was definitely the most like walk heavy day. I think I ended up around like eight, nine miles at that point. So we were dragging, but we got to the tea party and the tea at RVR was amazing. Um, I was a little bit disappointed that they closed their dealer's hall early. I didn't get to shop over there as much as I would like to, which I guess was good for my wallet. I did pick out a few gifts from my friends and a couple things for myself that I was really happy with. I got some stuff from bb and that I was really excited about. Um, but yeah, the tea at RVR was like spectacular. Um, it was super nice. They had the actual, uh, like con, like it was catered. They had con staff, like as waiters coming around, not like volunteers. Like I, I believe they like worked for the MGM or they were hired on to cater for this event. All the food was like really delicious. They did have savory options. So we started out with, uh, three scone options. Then we had three sandwich options and then we had three desserts to pick from and That's when I actually got a good idea of how many people came out to this event because um, the panels were pretty sparse in attendees and even with the fashion shows like it was Not very full and so I was kind of having a hard time uh, figuring out just how many people came out for this event and I think the tea gave me a really accurate representation so the tea was awesome. Um, we had a couple speakers, like the organizer said a few words, and then there were a few other little announcements, and that's when the organizer made the announcement that this was going to probably be either an, like an every two or three years type of thing, which again, super in support of that decision. Um, so our table was really nice. Um, there was a photo of me, like it was a screenshot from one of my friend's videos. She was doing a pan around at the table and I guess I was making a really weird face. I'll put it here. But one of my friends has been using it as a reaction image now. <laughs> and I can't remember for the life of me what I was talking about where I was making that face. Um, but it was kind of cool because um, I actually got to see some people that I had been like looking for throughout the weekend that I hadn't been able to talk to yet. So we were able to go around to some other tables before we got sat down and uh, started. So that was really nice. And then we took some pictures afterwards and then we got together for our huge group photo. I think there were a few people missing from it because some people did fly out Sunday. I chose to fly out Monday because one, it was way cheaper. And two, I wanted to make sure I had the full Sunday and I wasn't feeling like I was rushing to get out of there. So that wasn't too bad. Um, so yeah, we got our huge group photo and then I was running around trying to get pictures with people that I hadn't seen over the weekend uh, that I wanted to get photos with. Um, and then afterwards we 
left, I had to run back to my hotel. I think I had packed up. Yeah, so what we had done that morning, I think our checkout was around 11 because not um, my other roommates were, two of them were going home on Sunday and then the third ended up getting their own room and I didn't want to impose on them. I asked some of my other friends previously if I could crash in their room for the night since my flight was very early Monday morning. And that was no big deal. So I had packed and then I had to just run over, change out of Lolita because like I said, a lot of walking in Lolita and I was really tired at that point. And then also because I had to go get my luggage and bring it over to the MGM where my friends were staying, I was like, this is gonna be rough anyway because I wound up bringing my carry-on bag and then I had two checked bags because I flew on Southwest and so I got two free checked bags and I took full advantage of that because personally um, I'm not the type of person that wants to like try to like squish everything down to get it into one bag. I would rather just have everything packed um, not so densely because I was worried about things breaking and stuff like that and I didn't want to risk that. So I ended up bringing two bags um, that were large and so I was very happy that I changed into my little track suit to do that walk over because like I said the walk wasn't bad but carrying around luggage and I, I wasn't even going to try to do it in Lolita. So I ran and got my bags and then brought them up to my friend's room and then after that some people were going to the VIP mixer which I didn't buy the VIP ticket because most of it was just like drinking activities, which isn't really my thing. Um, not a huge alcohol person, so not a big deal. Um, and so then me and two of my friends who also didn't get VIP tickets while our other party members were doing that, we decided to go run over and find food on the strip. That like, and So that's when I found out that people will bother you, like salespeople, when you're not wearing Lolita. <laughs> so that was the downside, but it was all good. We got our food, we came back. And then Sunday evening was really fun as we had tried to go to um, this, I don't know what to call it. I think people were using the word art installation exhibit thing. We were originally going to go on Thursday night, but all of us were tired and so we didn't want to go. And I think they were also full on tickets for that evening. And so we decided to go on Sunday. It was, was uh, area... 15 I think the overall building was called and then the specific exhibit that we went to was Meow Wolf slash Omega Mart and so it was me a bunch of my friends and then Laura tagged along with us which was really fun because I got to hang out with her for a few hours and she's awesome so that was great and we had a lot of fun and I saw a couple people who uh I can't remember if they live in Vegas or if they just left a day later than us <laughs> but one of them went in Lolita and I'm like girl like props to you because that was my original plan and then I was like actually no get this shit off of me I'm tired and there's also a lot of stairs and crawl spaces that were already kind of a pain in the ass to do I ended up whacking my head on one of them because I stood up too soon and so it was already a little bit interesting to do in normal clothes I cannot imagine doing it in Lolita I would be very worried about having an accident even with like bloomers and everything just because of how much um like crawling and running around there was it was really fun and then we ended up getting home around like 1 a.m. That was the night that we put way too many people into an Uber. <laughs> Whoopsies. No big deal, it ended up being fine. And then um, I got to bed because I had to be at the airport the next morning. And then I flew out Monday morning and took a nap and then I had to go to class, which was great. I was so tired. So I'm just, I'm just glad that my my class for the morning had already been canceled, so I knew that, and so I was really glad of that because I was preparing to miss um, that class for this trip because it was one of the ones that I was doing really well in, and I was like, I can afford to miss one. But my teacher canceled anyway because apparently a lot of people don't show up to that one since it is the Monday before Thanksgiving. So that was nice, and then I just had to go to my second class of the day. So that wasn't a big deal. So that was the weekend, and that was really long. Um, I hope at least that was a little bit entertaining and you got kind of an idea of what that was like. So as for what I did not like about the convention, I did not like how much walking it took just to get back to the con center. So like I said, the panels were kind of sparsely attended because my, like I said earlier, it was kind of like if you wanted to do other things on the strip and not just stay at the con all day, you had to leave, which, and uh, I'm just speaking for myself, but I'm assuming other people felt this way as well. Once you left, you didn't want to go back because it just took so much effort to get back there. Um, so you could either 
you know, go for the big events and not really go to the panels because you didn't really want to put forth the effort to go back there after changing or going somewhere else. Or you could stay there all day and be kind of bored and then only and have very limited options for food and other stuff to do because between panels, all there really was to do was shop. And while the shopping was awesome, you know, kind of like once you saw everything, like you knew what you wanted to buy. You weren't really gonna be wanting to like shop for a really long time like maybe you would at an anime convention where there's like a gigantic dealer's hall with like so much stuff to see that you can't get it done in one sitting like uh again just speaking for myself but like once I did my little walk through of the dealer's hall I was like okay I know exactly what I'm gonna purchase I made those purchases and that was it um so yeah that was my critique <laughs> of the con and I think that's why the panels were so sparsely attended. And so I don't really know what the answer for that is. Um, like I said, our hotel was a lot smaller. So maybe picking a smaller venue. Like I'm sure that like the MGM was really cool. But I did get some feedback from some of my friends who stayed there. And I definitely noticed when I was going up there for the night. Uh, the times that I walked up with them for them to get changed or something. Or the night that I stayed in there. It kind of smelled like sewage in our rooms at night. I don't know why. Not fun. It was kind of gross. So that sucked. And then with the casino being so huge, you get lost easily. So venue wasn't my favorite. Um, I'm also not a huge gambling person. So Vegas was like, it was okay for me. Like I had fun, but like, it's not my favorite place in the world to go, but I thought it was good. So maybe it would be cool if uh, this event could travel. Like maybe they, instead of like it just being like Royal Vegas retreat every single time that it happens we could do like royal seattle royal chicago you know fun stuff like that and it would also i think give more people the opportunity to attend because um you know obviously i don't mind traveling for events if it's going to be like something like this where it's very important to like my niche and my hobbies um but i know traveling isn't realistic for everybody so that might be kind of cool to open it up to some more people i think attendance was probably around 150 to 200 people max and I don't know whether that was like a COVID thing whether if it was like people wanted to see how the event went first of all or what or if it was just traveling at all people just didn't want to I don't think that was bad attendance numbers for in, like by any means especially for something like this where it was very subculture focused so I thought that was fine I definitely think that they should be open to maybe moving it around um, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, the panels were okay. There was a few that I was super excited about, but there were also a lot where I was just like, I don't really care that much. Again, that's to my personal taste. But like I said, there wasn't a ton to do at the actual con outside of like the big events like the swap meet and the fashion shows and the tea party. Um, I definitely think my favorite thing was the tea. It was absolutely amazing. And I, it was better than any con tea party that I've ever been to. The staff was really nice. I really loved the vendors that they brought out for the event. I thought all of them were great choices. I think the swap meet was fun. There wasn't as much as I thought I, there was going to be, but again, I think that's a travel thing. Like, I was willing to bring my extra bag because I fit all of my coordinates and all of my clothing into my one bag. The extra bag was for what I wanted to bring to sell at the swap meet and then for my bulkier items. Like, I brought my big kumia, and so instead of trying to, like, flatten it, I was like, I'm just going to toss it into my duffel bag and be done with it. So that was another thing. Um, but overall, I think it was a really successful event. I would absolutely attend again if it happened. Um, now, the reason that I think it'd be a really great idea to do every two years is for one, just traveling is draining for me. I don't know about anybody else, but I don't really, that's not something I would wanna do every year. And I started planning and saving for this trip in May. And it was quite costly. Um, off the top of my head, I think on airfare and hotel fees alone, I spent around $600. Um, and that was going with the cheaper flights that I got Thursday and Monday because those were lower travel days. I also got very early like flights and like I picked the cheapest ones that I could that were nonstop. There were other options that had stops in other cities, but I was worried because flights have been getting canceled. I didn't want to risk getting stranded in a strange location. So, um, for me, booking my flights very early and staying at a cheaper hotel, my cost was around $600, $650. I also ended up spending a decent chunk of my money um, on Uber and getting around and also um, paying for like restaurants and the food that was available to us. 
And what else? I didn't spend all of the spending money that I saved. I saved about $700 as spending money, which sounds like it would be a lot, but it was mostly because it was a Lolita event. And I knew that if I saw a dress that I really wanted, I just wanted to have that money to be ready to drop um, if it was something that I was really excited about, which I did end up finding two pieces that I really wanted. So I was very glad that I saved that money and I didn't end up, like I said, I didn't end up spending all of it. Some of the shows were quite expensive. The uh, one that we went to, it wasn't a show, but you know, it was an attraction. The one that we went to on Sunday was $50. So, you know, an expensive trip. And like I said, I started saving and planning for this in May and the event was in November. So I definitely think every two years would be nice because I definitely would not be able to attend if it was every single year. Mostly just not because like I physically couldn't find the funds for it, but you know, it was a big expense and it was something that I had to save for and plan for, which was fine. But um, I definitely could be using that money in different ways. Um, if it were to be every year, I, I think I would have to skip it myself if it was every year. So every two years seems to be good. Um, I think overall it was pretty successful. I think attendance was good and I don't know about the con organizers financials, but um, hopefully it was a success for them. I hope they broke even. I would go again, definitely. So I think if it was every two years and it moved locations, that would be awesome. And I would absolutely recommend going. I thought it was a really fun weekend. I think the only regrets I had was I didn't really spend that much time at the actual con. So I didn't actually end up talking to many people outside of the people that I already knew that came with me or, you know, people that I followed on social media that I wanted to make sure to say hi to. But other than that, I had a really good time and I would recommend going and please check out anybody else's videos that they've made on the weekend. So I hope you have a good day and thank you for listening to me if you stuck around to the end. Uh, let me know if you did in the comments. Bye!